Hello, hello again and welcome back to another tutorial and this time I will take my old AF Nikko 85mm 1.8 and it simply needs some re I mean to be re-grease or re loop because of the focus is a bit uh, you say dry in the uh, focus system focus system helicoid um, so I mean the the lens was actually perfect it works perfect so uh, but uh, it simply needs some new grease inside there so let's see what we can do about it we zoom out and we need some tools hmm. first we need some hand tools uh, some flathead screwdrivers uh, this is a three millimeter and there is a two millimeter I will probably use both or only one and we really need some JIS screwdrivers those two that is a uh, part of a set of four um, I buy it I buy those at uh, ifixit.com and it's a good quality I mean I prefer my my Vera German brand uh, because it's yeah just a different material but they also work pretty good uh, there are four sizes from two to around four millimeter so uh, and it has the JIS tip which is very important with working with Japanese lenses or many of the Asian lenses uh, because it's the JIS screws that's in here not Philips or PH00 well I will also use a uh, flathead 1.2 millimeter there's only one screw in here that needs to be unscrewed with this one and uh, which is also very handy which I like is the uh, dentist tool so uh, I maybe will use this one is a old compass which I have filed and grind so so it so I can use it with with the disassembled lenses and cameras so I just filed the tip so it fits perfect and this one is adjustable you can get some similar on the internet uh, this tool which is a very very effective tool is the uh, rubber cones from Japan hobby tool they're very good with working with lenses and some cameras to unscrew the lenses and retaining ring and so in this case uh, you could also go to the hardware store uh, and buy a gasket yeah a gasket well yeah but it is a gasket for plumbing uh, pipes and they are very very sticky rubber you can also buy a set of nine um, of those uh, rubber tools I have modified this one but the, there is nine of those this is only a part of the set you can buy on Amazon or eBay very good a blower is also very handy and we need some well a tweezer is also very handy pointy one we will need some uh, chemical stuff and uh, to clean the actual helicoid I will use isopropyl alcohol 99% you could also use lighter fluid but uh, in this case I will just use uh, isopropyl alcohol I will also use some nail polish remover and this with the uh, acetone is for the screws uh, especially inside and on the back and to maybe I mean get the screws in in a um, 
in a good shape i mean not the screws itself but uh, to lock the screws uh, i will use the medium which is blue i mean the bottle is red but they are all red from loctite of the thread lock but the inside is blue and it's a normal a medium um, thread lock which is good for not the smallest screw but the the bigger one and to actually loop i mean use the grease to re-grease the the focusing system in here i'll use the grade 10 which is a fine very soft uh, buttery um, grease and very good for for helicoids and it's from japanhobbytool.com here you can see it. I cannot uh, at all Japanese, so <laughs> but maybe you can translate it. Well, I think it says grease or helicoid grease, um, uh, grade 10 or something like that. No, I don't know. I cannot that word Japanese. But um, we will get into this lens and see how good it can be. Just zoom in a little. So, and here we are. So the first thing to do is actually the uh, the focusing ring here, the rubber, which I need to take off. And for that, the uh, rounded corner here, spade something, is very good for that. Because there are some uh, double adhesive tape around the rubber. Uh, ring here so just dig in under it and move all the way around mine is not that so hard to to actually unscrew but because I've been into the lens before so oh for that that's it better check my light here so <clears throat> And now the um, the what do you say? We need to go into it. So how to do that? Well, there is, should be a set screw here around. I mean, there are some holes in the focusing ring all around here, and there in those one of those only. There is a uh, tiny set screw. That we need to unscrew and for that I will use the 1.2 millimeter flathead screwdriver to do that and you simply fully unscrew it so out it's good with a magnetized screwdriver uh, to get it out <coughs> because it will be easier and now I can simply unscrew the front lens group and for that I will use this one um, actually not the front lens group but the front name ring of course yeah and for that I can use the cones here which is very good I could use this rubber gasket to just put it on here it has the same diameter and just unscrew it but I think this one has a better grip or oh, I could use this one this has a 60.2 millimeter and it's also very good you see it has a a um, what do you say a concave uh, surface here so we can just try this it will be fine but <coughs> also good to have a good grip on this uh, bigger tool you can just put this aside so and all for that so it is it's metal uh, no plastic in here of this just put it aside now, the whole um, front lens group 
is just taken out in one, I mean, one single piece. Of course, there is the different lens element in here, but it will just pop out here in one piece. There is a guide pin here, which you can see here. And this this uh, lookalike screw is not a screw. It's adjusting um, eccentric that you can adjust uh, part of it actually through the uh, the hole here one of the hole in the focusing ring that one can actually put in a screwdriver and adjust it but if the lens works perfect don't don't uh, screw it i mean makes any adjustment so we can just put this screwdriver aside, it will not be used anymore. <clears throat> and so, um, it can just pop in my hand. Set the aperture to something like 16. Oh. <laughs> and uh, the lens, front lens screw will just fall into your hand. So, you see the aperture is fully closed. This ring here is the lock ring for the whole aperture system, but it's not a part of this case because the aperture is actually working fine as it should. So <clears throat> next thing to do is actually to take off the mount, but uh, and you can just set this one to uh, unlock the. I mean, unlock the uh, aperture ring so it can be working as it should. It will be easier when you un I mean, uh, when you disassemble the back part. You can just take a sneak peek in here and just to see how it looks. So the aperture connection pin here from the back to the their curved um, yeah connection pin and since this is a non D it's a non D here uh, there's only a, uh, a circuit board here it will say there is not a brush in here with uh, where the uh, lens tells the camera where the focusing mechanism actually is. So it's a very simple one. It's just connected to the to the um, <coughs> contacts here on the back. So the only thing I need to take out is the black uh, not half moon but uh, three quarter moon shape uh, piece of plastic or metal. Um, and there are some screws around there, four screws around here, one there, there, and not this one, uh -uh, but this one here. And the last one is over here, closest to the actual two screws on the, um, on the contact bridge or whatever it calls. So we need to unscrew that and it will be easier if we actually set it to near end. It will stay here, 0 0.85. So you can see the whole tube here on the back. It will be much easier to get into. <clears throat> now, so I can just use my smaller one, it will be the 2 millimeter. And there is one thing that is important. There are, I said there were four screws around here, but there are three at the same size head. The fourth, uh, the number four screw is a tiny countersunk screw. Not really countersunk. Yeah, it is actually countersunk. If we look closer to it, if it's possible. And if you sit 
closest to the contact here just so you remember and the other screws are bigger head <clears throat> see here this screw is a lock pin for the when you connect it to the camera so and you said sh you should let it stay there so then the next one is here and the last one here one thing is this little tiny screw you do not need to unscrew it it's the stop for the aperture pin here so there is no need for unscrew this uh -uh. no so now we can lift this out here I mean the reason I do not take the um, the contact off here is because uh, the the contacts bridge here is a bit worn out because I, um, I actually got the lens because it it didn't work so I fixed the the their connection uh, board here the contact board here but now it works pretty good so we need to have a small screwdriver and gently lift up here and then lift up here you see there there is a kind of a, a lock in here there and there but if your lens is a better shape and then this one you can just unscrew the the two screws here and there and it will be easier to take out the the um, the inner ring here uh, it's a bit tight fit here <laughs> but it will go fine and then we are there so this is how it looks put it aside and then I can just unscrew the mount itself and there are three screws around here and uh, it's very important you use a JIS if you only use a Phillips screwdriver which we actually can try to do this is a new P800 and if I use it on here uh, in one of the screws it will in some cases just cam over so it's not really good especially if the screws are way too tight but if the screws are way too tight one can use some uh, nail polish remover which I will do now just to show it <coughs> The screws in, in my lens is not a problem, but uh, it could be a problem in your lens. So you simply just add a little, just on the head. And of course we do it with the three of them. Something like that. And just let it suck in. So the uh, nail polish remover with the acetone will melt the... Uh, thread locker and in some lenses they have used a lot I mean way too much so just a tiny amount not you do not need to to <laughs> use way too much it's not necessary and oh I forgot one thing which I should have mentioned before when where did it go here? this one here when taking out the the front lens screw from the actual um, lens body in my lens there was a spacer here 
and there's only one spacer here which is sit over here and of course when we put it back into the lens <coughs> I'll just put it in like this so just so we remember it's just my fail <laughs> um, but we continue with the three screws around here which should be quite easy because of the thread I mean the nail polish remover and uh, the screws are good because they can be picked out with the magnetized screwdriver so remember the gear and then it's out now to take off the uh, mount itself just uh, one can lift up a little to help it hold it there take care of the circuit board so and here it comes out that's it that's the this circuit board actually have the information about the lens the uh, the focal length and the aperture so the camera knows exactly what kind of lens is actually attached to the camera <clears throat> maybe there are some more info about what's going on <clears throat> now let's continue in here um, you can see I can still use the uh, the uh, focusing ring and the gear will turn so now I will take the out the next part which is this uh, cam so if I push the uh, actual uh, aperture connection pin here and move it I can uh, free out the uh, this cam here which is the connection from the the aperture ring itself and into the um, to the cam in here uh, which control part of the aperture system so aside with that and now I can take off the uh, aperture ring itself without any problem You see, it, the uh, connection should sit here, and it has all the free space. If we just put it on again, it has all the free space there. So you can see where I mean, it can only sit in one position. It cannot sit over here, not at all. So, <clears throat> aside with that. And there is a spring here that we can detach <coughs> here so and uh, then there is a screw here that actually hold the this cam here and then I will just unscrew it maybe I need another screwdriver yeah not this one and I mean it can sit tight if it sits tight uh, again I will use my <laughs> my uh, good stuff here nail polish remover and add a little here on the screw not too much not necessary it should just suck into the screw hole and then it should be easier to simply unscrew it so, so it was a bit tight and uh, we can just where's my tweezer here no still fine without and I simply unscrew this screw 
so it's a special shape screw and just put it aside and uh, I can also take out oh well I should have taken out before but I can unscrew this one it also needs some nail polish remover so there don't go too close to the plastic because uh, acetone is actually melting plastic and just in case if uh, something uh, is not in correct shape I have of course I've been into the lens before but I simply scratch here on the side of this uh, part and on the other side so I know exactly where it should sit as you can see here and there and then this should be quite easy to unscrew it small screws and the other one so it I mean it could I could let it stay there but uh, so it's just so you can see what's actually going on if you take parts out now I can take out the cam here it looks like this one this is the connection pin down to the uh, to the actual aperture system on the other side here so just so we know how it works <coughs> this is the connection pin here so when I move the see the fork here so when I move move the this pin here on the which is the connection to the camera I will simply move it like this So this is how it works. So put it aside so I know where things are. And then <clears throat> I can also take out the gear, which I need to take out. So it is there. Nothing special with that. And now my lens is actually free in some some way but I will also take off the the outer housing here and it sits with three screws and you maybe think okay there are four screws around here one there 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 and there so not why not four well you see the locks um, the lock mechanism for the aperture ring which I can turn here so this is how it works so if I turn it it will stay in and I push in and turn it it will go out and stay out so this screw you do not need to take out I mean if it's a case that something is not working well you can just take it out but it will be better if you just take out the three screws here there and there just so we know it. I just put a mark here so it will be easier uh, when I show it on the video so the red one here <laughs> uh, which is closest to the to the um, well the brand I mean the type of the lens so you do not need to take that out so just this one here so, oh tiny screws and this one here they're all the same screws so there's no problem with that have a grip down here under the lens when you hold it So now the last screw of that and then I can take out the uh, the outer housing and 
and this should be not pushed in here because it will be difficult when you take it out so it has to be stay there so the white dot is in line with the orange dot here so we can just uh, move it a little I mean it should be possible so there is uh, the spring for the for the aperture this one here and uh, we do <coughs> we don't need to take that out it can be a little difficult oh okay <laughs> okay here the it comes off well I need to glue it in into place but okay yeah but um, I can just do so like this here and take it out so if we turn it a little and hold here maybe um, well of course it will be easier to take that out but yeah, I can just turn it a little and then take it out so this is how it looks oh my lens is broken more hmm. so I need maybe a little glue but it will be sooner now <clears throat> the next thing is the um, there are three screws around here I mean how is this part actually working there are three tubes it will say the inner tube here with the lens back lens group and there is a middle one which is acts as a kind of a, a middle tube and then the outer uh, focusing ring itself uh, which we will see okay how to go into that hmm. and then the housing here of course well which I need to do is to take out three screws around here there is one screw here close to the spring there is another one close to this spring here it will be this one down here and the last one is here right beside the, the gear and it's a uh, countersunk screws so um, and it doesn't seem there was any thread lock in here well there may be uh, maybe some just a tiny amount <clears throat> and I could I could actually have uh, add some here on the back well I can just show it if the, those uh, screws are a bit tight I can just add a little amount of thread lock I mean an anti thread lock <laughs> here into the hole here there and there so it will be easier to unscrew the three screws but remember it should be a JIS screwdriver now <clears throat> just continue with this one and have a good grip here and uh, the whole part I actually take out it will come out here on the back it will say it there Let's go this and the last screw down here. So it's free. <clears throat> See, the whole housing here will come out in one piece. And uh, it should just be easy to lift out 
like that. It can only sit in one position. And there are also some, yeah, I want to show. Um, this hole down here is where the gear goes. So there is no way it can only it can only sit in one place. There's no way it sit sits uh, wrong. It can only sit right. I mean, correct. And in this lens, maybe it's different in your lens. There are two spacers. There is a brush one, and it looks like it's a. Uh, coat it with some Teflon or something like that to make it smooth and easy to move. So the brass ring, when you see here, goes in first. Just so you not sit it, sit them wrong. It would be like that. And then this one is goes in next, the black one. But since they are out, um, we can just put them aside. So, now we actually see into the actual focusing system. It's good to take off the... Uh, I mean, it will make it easier. When I uh, clean the helicoids, um, to take out the, the name scale, I mean, <laughs> the scale itself, and before doing so, I'll just set a mark here. I mean, no one will see it, so there is no problem. They have put on some kind of lac polish, nail polish maybe, I don't know. But uh, we'll just take it off. The screws are tiny. So. And then the other side here. Yeah. Off for that. So it is. And then the distance scale itself is off. So now we are actually more into the lens uh, helicoid system. And uh, there are some screws around here. There, uh, we begin to take out our reference. Is the the uh, gear here and the uh, one scratch <laughs> I made here? Uh, so I have a kind of a, a reference when I put things back into the into the actually focusing system. So by taking out the um, the uh, gear here, it should be possible to move the the uh, the whole body. I mean the whole system in here. So there are two screws around. It will be this one and this one. And important thing, there is in the bottom. I mean in the other end of this gear, it will say something in here. Uh, when we look down here, there is a tiny brush or branch. Not quite sure, uh, but it's actually the the bearing in the end of this gear axle. And I also made a scratch around here, as you probably can see, and here on the other side, so I know where this one sits correct. So, all for that. There was some thread lock. So if it was necessary, I could just have add some, some uh, nail polish remover <clears throat> directly here on the on the screw, so it can suck in a little to uh, soften the thread log in there. So now 
I can actually unscrew this last screw and take care of the little bearing. Just have a finger here on the gear. So, and it's out. Now, so I take out the gear here and it looks like something here. So just so we know what you're talking about, this little bearing kind of, this one here, and I can see the, there is actually no grease at all, so it's a bit dry, but I will clean it anyway. <clears throat> So this is how it looks. I can I cannot use grease in here. So I will just use some sewing machine oil to actually loop the parts in here. So <clears throat> and now we are almost ready to take out the focusing system but you see if I turn it and hold it with the lens towards the disc it's no problem but if I turn it over and move the actual focusing ring I mean uh, the inside here the front is actually pop out so um, I think I will just make it easier to set it to to actually near end and then take out the three screws here and remember there are three um, there are three uh, plastic nylon or something like that that also need to come in where the screws are <clears throat> my reference mark will be the the one screw with the distance mark here uh, the scale actually and uh, I have a distance I have a reference here also which is close to the one end of the scale so it shouldn't be a problem to take it out and just a tiny dust here. Well, so I will unscrew those. Ah, they are too tight. So, but I can add a little thread. I mean, nail polish remover here, there, and there to soften this uh, the screws. So it should be easier and just let it suck in here there and we will do it again It should really be sucked into the thread and hopefully it will be easier to oh, miss uh, one where did it go here and it evaporates very fast because of the acetone So there, it must be fine. And then we try again. <clears throat> oh, and it's free. And so you can see here the thread lock in here, the white stuff. 
Maybe I should try the other screwdriver. Will it be better? No. It's a bit too big. I will just continue with this one. And out with a little plastic thingy. This is how it looks. <coughs> and here you can see the inside of the the uh, back lens group. So take care of when uh, I mean holding a, in a good position. So it shouldn't be a problem. And <coughs> Like, oh, it's really tight. So there. And now we come to the final screw. And have a good grip so you not uh, drop the back lens part. Gosh, it's too tight. Well, more nail polish remover. Mm. It really needs a lot. Don't put it on the uh, on the small rollers, plastic rollers there, because it will. Uh, it could be. You could actually damage that. Maybe this one will f work better. Yeah, that was amazing. Gosh, way too tight. So, there. No. Oh, I just need another screwdriver. Hold on a second. Well, I'll try with a, another one. It's a 2.4 millimeter, which I hope it will work better. It was really tight. Gosh. Whew. So now it's off. Yeah, sometimes things can be really tight. So you can see the white stuff here on the on the screw. This is the uh, old thread lock. So now things should actually be possible to take out and uh, where's my this it's there mm, yep yeah. and there should stay <clears throat> I could actually just made a um, kind of a reference mark here this is not a big problem. So I have a reference mark here to the weather, one end of the distant scale. So I know where this part sits. And it comes out the other way. It's come out of the front. It's a bit different made this uh, lens. Well, you can see this uh, part of the helicoid should come in in one. You can only sit here. So this gap here will go towards this here. But then I can just put this side. And then the actual uh, 
helicoid, which is this part here. So it should be possible to take out. And here we are. And you can see there is a lot of dirt and stuff around here, which is the old um, grease that I need to clean. And now also on the inside here, there's a, well, it looks it looks fine, but still a, a bit dirty. I mean, it's it's an old lens. So, and then it's time to do some cleaning. Just away with some part of tools here. <clears throat> and I think I will begin with this, the inside here. And for that I will use a fine brush here. Just dig it into put it into the isopropyl alcohol and just do some cleaning of the the site. So all the, the old grease will come away. I mean there was not really much on it. I think But I think it will be fine. And just use a napkin to clean the, I mean, take away the rest of what's on the, the inside here. So it looks fine. I mean, the, the aluminium looks actually okay. There's not really much damage to it. So I hope the lens will work pretty good when I'm done. It's, a, it's really a good lens for portrait and if you want like the short type of feel, it's a perfect lens for that. And so it's fine for now. I can just put away. And then the inside. There's no need to take off the plastic ring here. But in my opinion, I think it's is it glued into place or with maybe with some self adhesive tape or whatever. But there isn't any screw, so uh, yeah, it's not a problem. I can just clean the inside here, and then it's fine. And of course, the outside here too. So just drop it in here. And also the gap uh, for the uh, for the three screws needs some cleaning, so everything runs smooth and nice. Just like a, making a dinner, <laughs> a soup. <laughs> And also do the uh, outside here. Wow, it looks fine. And then the hmm. napkin put in here. Oh. <laughs> I think this one be a very good lens with a fine working focusing system. So
so and steel inside here so wow looks fine and let's have a look at this one <coughs> it's not really the problem because it will just run uh, there's no need for cleaning this part because it's not really there's not really uh, any grease on this one <coughs> there's a smart thing here on the back which I think is really really clever that should be put into more lenses this is really double I mean something like uh, very sticky and I think it's meant to catch dust or something that comes into the lens because it's really sticky <clears throat> But now I can actually just loot the uh, the two part of the helicoy and uh, simply grease the I mean re loop the lens so it's it's fine and for that I will use a fine makeup brush which I think is good. It's good for that, uh, for that, the great tin grease. <clears throat> this one here, there, there, there. So, and now we're ready to re grease. So, this one here, since I set a mark here, it will be very easy to put in again when I put this on here see the mark here is in line with this one because then I it will be easier for me to put in the the uh, actual inside I mean the internal tube with a back lens group sit on <coughs> But uh, now it's time to use some tiny amount of loop. It will not be really much. It's only on the on the uh, it's not this area here. It's only on this uh, area here, all the way, and up here that needs to be loop in my opinion I do not have a a um, I do not have a service repair manual for this this lens I mean I couldn't find any so therefore I made this uh, video I mean this is just for um, wipe the the grease so I only have the grease, not the <coughs> the wet stuff. So I can just use this one here and just use a tiny amount. So and it will be the inside here. Just a thin layer. So there. And up here. <clears throat> it 
it will just be fine for now. I will just uh, put it in. Where is my reference mark? And my reference mark here. Wow, it uh, is actually working pretty good. So that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There. It's also have the stop here. There is a there is a stop here for the uh, focusing ring itself. So there is a gap between here. I know it's difficult to see there and over to here. So the lens will actually move from one side here to the other I will say something like that there it can only sit in one position so you can see it stopped there and it also stopped at the other end here there so that's fine. So you will turn it the inside counterclockwise and let it stay there. Because then the holes here are free. And there and the last one here. So that's it. So and then I can just put in my <coughs> my uh, lens part here and it should stay something like that okay where did it go here Am I wrong? Hmm. No. There. Should be. So I was wrong. It's the the gap here. Not this gap, but the other one here. The longest, I mean the biggest gap here goes over this part here. Just put it in, and so it'd be something like that. So, but I need to screw the plastic thingy in here, and for that, I will uh, just add the rollers with the screw. And for, I mean, <clears throat> to just do it fine, I'll just add a little tiny amount of of uh, thread lock. <clears throat> oh. Tiny drop, and put it in here. So it stays there. Another tiny drop. Oh. And then next. 
text over here. <clears throat> and since it's a medium thread logger, you you do not need to use so much. So that's it. And there is no need. I mean, yeah, just put it aside here. <clears throat> Now I can uh, add this to the uh, plastic thingy, put it in here, and then screw it in. Can be a little tricky. Um, oh, so there's they there, and they it is. <laughs> <clears throat> and then the next one, plastic goes in. And the last one. So, okay, there. <clears throat> so there. Come on, little fellow. Here we go. And now it's fine. So we can see it's actually very good. It's very much much better. No noisy metal sound. And then I will put in the the gear here. And before doing so, uh, just set it out, expand it so it's something like that, then it will be easier to add the uh, the the plate. Oh. So, and where did it go? Oh, here. <laughs> <clears throat> but before doing so, I have a little earring here, which I need to to take out this one and just add a tiny amount and use my brush here, tiny amount of grease here on the end. Well, I should actually clean it first. Put some isopropyl alcohol. Maybe there are some old, old grease on it. So much better. <laughs> and probably the bearing also itself. Just add it into. Some kind of small amount of isopropyl alcohol, and then add a tiny amount of grease. So that's it, and um, more than enough.
add the little bearing here move it a little so there will be some good <coughs> grease on it and then I can put this in here uh, but before doing so a little amount of dreadlock here on the two holes there and in this hole here doesn't have to be much but just a little <coughs> then load my screwdriver with one screw So it will be easier to put the part in. So there. <coughs> it's easier when uh, the front here is. Uh, so and then you can have a finger here to hold it it can be a little difficult to put in the bearing because it's very tight fit I see not on yet so now it is there and then you can buy okay there so and now it's safe in place and the rest of the lens is actually pretty straightforward do I have any paper here to have some thread log on And because of I've set the the scratch here, it shouldn't stay too close to the edge because then the it will be too tight or too uh, stiff in the focusing. So. And now it's it's fine. Wow, works pretty good. And there's no need for add any loop on the uh, the dented ring here. It should should only be in the uh, in the uh, surface here where I mentioned. So now it's time to put in the rest of the thing into the lens body. And we can begin with the uh, scale. So it sits and a screwdriver. Where did it go here? So and since I have a mark, it's no problem to find out where the scale should sit. It's therefore it's it, it is important without a repair manual because there is no one to ask about where parts should sit so you better have to make your mark around the parts so and then we put in this here The last screw here. <clears throat> and I know there is some red, uh, what do you say, nail polish. But it's not a problem here. I mean, if you tighten the screws gently, it will not be a problem. So, 
and now I can put it into the body itself and remember just remember to add the uh, the uh, well I think I will just need some cleaning because in here there is actually some dirt so with the uh, isopropyl alcohol <coughs> I can do some cleaning in here so there So it's fine there. And now it's it's actually a fine as it should be. So and there may be the uh, the two rings here, washers here probably need will need some cleaning because they are actually very dirty maybe they have used some grease uh, on those maybe a light very light grease I don't know since I, since I do not have the repair manual but I will clean them anyway so we can uh, make it work better and this one actually looks fine so <coughs> by adding this one the black one over here so and the shiny brass ring here so and so it should sit and then add um, yeah add this on here I can just uh, to make it easier uh, where did it go here the brush I can just add a little amount of grease down here to the yeah. Uh, it's not easy. Just clean this a little. I should have done this before but uh, well so it is I think it will be fine anyway so and now it's fine I'm not quite sure if there should be any any uh, what do you say any loop on the branch here I think it will work without any grease because of the black Teflon coated uh, spacer I think it must be Teflon or something like that but uh, I mentioned that I will use some grease in here I mean uh, oil tiny amount of, of oil So I'll use some um, <coughs> sewing machine oil because I cannot add any grease into here so by using 
It's called Atlantic uh, oil. Just a tiny amount. So that should be enough. And let it go in. And that's fine for that. And so I can put this, uh, the outer housing, on here. And where is my mark here? Oh, well, there's no need for any mark because I have the rounded shape here, which goes on over to the gear here. So it's it like that. And one has to move it a little. So it will fit into place. And it should be fine. have the three screws three long screws here which also have a tiny dip of thread lock And the next one. There's no need for too much thread lock. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a difference. I think this lens will be very, very good. <laughs> Those screws has to be tightened, not too much, but uh, just as they sit tight. So that's it. Wow, pretty good, as I see it. And then we can uh, just put in the, the rest of the parts. We can actually add the, the, um, the gear, intermediate gear. This just needs some cleaning on the axle. And, and then a tiny bit of loop here. That's it. Then put it in. Well, I could have put it on before, but it will, it will be fine enough. So, and then there is no, you shouldn't be, use any grease on the, uh, on the gear itself. So no grease. And then set it to infinity. And then it will be easier to set the parts on, which will be the, uh, the housing. Should come on. And I think the scale actually sits uh, not good. So I'll just use a tiny amount of of uh, contact glue, 
which will be fine enough for this and then take it out here and then add just a little here there and there that's more than enough one should of course set the scale correct so and it will stay there I mean hopefully <laughs> but it will work fine now put on the housing here and uh, just turn it a little and then put it on there so now it fits and the screws goes in so and the last screw those <clears throat> and then I can just add my my uh, not the aperturing yet um, I will add this part here which will stay over here maybe it's just easier to do so this cam will sit here and with a little little amount of uh, oh go away there so that amount of thread lock should be fine only on the thread see so And it should be really loose. Now at this part here, and since I have those uh, small um, scratch here, I know exactly where it should sit. Um, there, come on, little fellow. There. So, and the next one. And it should sit fine. So there and there so works pretty good and then I can just add my uh, I mean I also need to put the spring on here this spring here so and you sit there without any problem and then I can add my aperture ring Uh, you can just unlock it so it's it like that and then add the aperture ring you can only sit over there and then you move it back and forth a little <clears throat> so it stays there so you can just set it to 16 and put on this cam by pushing the aperture pin over here put this on here into the 
gap here with the on the aperture ring and then release oh it does have to sit under it oh back to 16 and then it has to rest on here and over here Okay, so oh, <laughs> of course, the gear here will just do it like that, and so it stays there. So it looks like it should look like that can see it rest on the on the little thing that sticks out and it also have the same over here so everything is actually proper uh, put in and uh, well so we just need to put the the um, the mount on and it can only sit in one position so by by uh, we need some kind of I mean a tiny amount of grease here on the uh, uh, we can just do like this tiny amount of grease here on the side of the okay there. So and the the gear here will run smooth, and then add this on. So and uh, where is my screwdriver here? And you can add a tiny amount of of a thread lock if you want. Oh, not two screws. <laughs> and then the the last screw on the mount and tighten it then the plastic here on the back and by uh, pushing the the little pin here connection pin so it will be easier to put the, this ring on. So there. And it can be a little tricky to put in. So take care of the, the contact here. So. gently press it in and <clears throat> it can only sit in one position so the last four screws on the back uh, will stay there and then the tiny screw here the countersunk screw that is closest to the the contact will sit there. In my lens, I don't know the the ver the D version uh, is made the same way because I only have this 
85 mm non di So wow. It's really good. No noisy noise. And then the front lens group will be put in. And you see the, the fork here needs to go over the pin down here. So by setting the lens to 16, the aperture ring to 16, <coughs> and the guide pin here, which you do not need to unscrew, you simply put this lens on. It's easier than when you turn it over. And it should fit in like that and will it work yeah so the last thing to do is to put it the the nameplate on and I have a tool to tighten it this one here <laughs> I can just add my so and find the little gap the little hole where the um, where did it go? Oh, there it is. See, and we miss one thing. <laughs> I think there was something. <laughs> Let's go it again because there was a spacer. <laughs> That was actually this spacer here, I just forgot. So I turn it over again and pop it out in my hand. And simply put this on here. Well, things happen. <laughs> and then try again. So there it's easier to see the guide pin. And hopefully it will come in here. Will it work? Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and then I can put the ring on. Tighten it. <laughs> and then I have my little mark here. Where I sit in the beginning, this mark. So there should be a hole here where I can add the the tiny set screw and there. So there. So and the last thing to do is simply to put the rubber ring on and then we are done. So, now this is much better, really, wow, like a new lens. <clears throat> that was all for me uh, about this lens, so I uh, hope you can use the info about how to clean and re-loop your, your 85mm. It's a great lens for portrait and so. So that's all. Bye-bye.